hi 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 and thanks for stopping my two hour channel where we talk about filmmaking today we're gonna take a look at the Sony a7S Mark III keep in mind that these are just predictions of the specifications that this camera might have I can confirm that successor to the Alpha 7S Mark II will be coming later this summer. It was confirmed by Kenji Tanaka from Sony. What's new about this camera is 12.2 megapixels on the full frame sensor with a fast readout. So the new thing here, because 12 megapixels was something that was already introduced in the previous model, is the fast readout and it's also the large pixels. Sony has said that it's gonna have the largest pixels that any camera on the market has. If we take a look at this picture, we can see the differences that on the same sensor size, which is full frame, you have a lot of pixels versus you have less pixels, but each pixel is individually bigger. 24 megapixels equals a 5.93 micron pixel pitch compared to 8.4 micron pixel pitch of a 12 megapixels on a sensor. So you can see just in numbers that each pixel is a whole lot bigger. With the 16-bit RAW that Sony introduced in this camera, this camera has taken first place in every single category when it comes to RAW file format. Compared to other Sony models, it's on the first place with 16-bit RAW, uncompressed and compressed if we compare it with other cameras on the market, so other brands. It's also taking first place because other cameras are having maximum of 14-bit uncompressed and compressed RAW, and some cameras are even having it lower, 12 uncompressed and compressed RAW. 15 stops of dynamic range is the next thing that this camera is going to introduce. If you're confused about what dynamic range means, it basically means that you have saved yourself highlights and shadows. When you have low dynamic range, everything is crushed. So there is no recovery in the highlights and there is no recovery in the shadows. What is captured is captured. So in post-production, you cannot save any of this. But if you have high dynamic range, everything is more balanced and you have like full tone of the image. If we just compare it next to the Aria Alexa Red Monstro and the human eye, we can see that this camera is somewhere close to Aria Alexa at 15 stops of dynamic range versus Red Monstro that is at 17 stops dynamic range and then we have the human eye that has 25 stops of dynamic range. Some people say that it's gonna have full HD, 1080p, 240 FPS, which is essentially gonna give you the option to slow down, super slow down the footage. I, on my camera that I'm recording right now, which is Panasonic GH5S, I'm having 240 FPS, and I gotta say it's game changer. For me, it's a game changer. I actually had a chance to record a whole video. Uh, it was some kind of a competition in a gym, and I recorded it at 240 frames per second. I slowed the footage down in the post-production, and it was absolutely amazing. I'm actually gonna show you the footage so you can see 240 frames per second. model it was only 8-bit internal and for 10k we needed to use an external recorders such as Atomos and Ninja. With this one we don't need external recorders only if we want to shoot the raw video which will be capable at 4k but at 120 fps using the HDMI video output. 600 megabits per second bitrate is amazing. Maybe not so good with the recent and the newest competitor, the Canon EOS R5 that was just announced two weeks ago that has over 1000 megabits per second of bitrate, but I'm 
telling you that 600 is amazing because I'm having a camera that has 480 megabits per second and it's it's lovely. As I already explained the dynamic range, I'm also gonna explain the low bitrate because you might be confused what low bitrate means. If you are an advanced filmmaker, you can definitely skip this part. Here is a great example. You can see at the text on the boat that with low bitrate, you cannot see anything what it says, but with high bitrate, everything is super, super, super amazing and super sharp. It doesn't look chunky, it doesn't look pixelated, it looks super clean and that is the difference between the low bitrate and high bitrate. Please do not make great specifications with lower bitrates. It would be like winning a lottery and then making a suicide. Knowing that this camera has amazing specifications and amazing bitrate makes my heart <sighs> calm, makes my heart and my soul really really calm. Now let's compare the bitrate between other camera brands. This camera does not have dual eyes so it could be an issue for someone that has a lower or smaller sensor such as Micro Four Thirds sensor which is why the dual eyes so is an important thing for Micro Four Thirds sensor but in my opinion if you're having a full frame sensor Dual ISO is not necessary because you're already having a killer beast because you have low megapixels on a big full frame sensor. It's essentially going to give you that killer beast camera. So I don't really see why you would need to have dual native ISO. This camera has no recording limit. Just think about the subject that you're filming. He's talking, it's interview, it's a long interview and your camera stops recording right at the middle of something interesting that he was saying. You have to start it again, you have to apologize, you have to ask him to repeat what he said. He doesn't remember because it was like on the go and you're in a big trouble. You've also spent a lot of time color matching your shots between the other cameras. If you have multicam setup, you've also spent a lot of time dialing the settings and now you have to do it all over again just because your camera has a recording limit. What can we tell about Sony that there's Scream Sony? Well, flip out screen. Sony had a flip out screen for ages and while everyone was switching to the fully articulated screens, Sony was like, no, 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 I'm gonna stick with a flip out screen because I don't wanna be like the everybody else on the market. But then Sony realized that it's not about competing with other brands, it's actually giving users what they want. And every user wanted a fully articulated screen on the Sony. It was the one thing that all complained. And now the Sony finally introduced fully articulated screen on the full frame camera and this model will have the fully articulated screen. As I said in my previous video, where I compared the Canon EOS R to R6, you can click here to watch that video. I also said that having two card slots, dual card slots, is absolute necessity. Because you cannot predict when you're gonna have a card failure, when your battery is gonna die. So you cannot predict it. It's something that might happen tomorrow, it's something that might happen in a year. But having footage recorded at the same time on two cards is amazing. If one card goes dead, you have the entire footage saved on the other card. You're saved, so the client will receive the final product. What similarities do these cameras have? The things they have the same is shutter speed, the sensor size, they both have around 12 megapixels, and the sensor type, which is a CMOS sensor, is absolutely the same. These are first leaked images according to Sony Alpha rumors. Just looking at the back side of this camera, we can see that there is no on top screen to see your settings. The red recording button is absolutely the same as in Panasonic GH5S. All the dials are on the right side. They should have kept it more organized by putting one dial on the left side, because on the left side, we don't have anything beside the low logo, 4K logo, that says that it will probably be 4K maximum recording at 60 frames per second. When we look at the other image, we can see that there is fully articulated screen, so they decided to switch from the flip out screen to fully articulated screen after all of these years. I also have to mention that there won't be any in-body image stabilization, keep that in mind. There will be only gyro metadata, because you can put the gyro metadata into any other software and you can do the stabilization in post. Five years of waiting to be slightly disappointed. With Canon cameras announced two weeks ago, having these kind of specs is a little disappointing, especially if it will come at high price. Some even say at more than $3,000.
Five years we all waited for Sony to come up with a badass camera. This camera is just a little upgrade from the previous model. It's not a huge difference as most camera lovers expected. We make content every few days and if you would like to support us consider subscribing. Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.